Got five. Has it blocked? And out of bounds, Tennessee basketball. Anything surprised you guys so far? You know, I have to tell you, I'm surprised by the fact that, that Gonzaga has weathered every single blow physically, just in terms of the way they've competed tonight. Well, I'm not surprised at all at the size of Gonzaga bothering Tennessee. And you saw it on those last two plays. Wayne Chisholm, a guy that Tennessee relies upon, not able to get shots off. And now, in, in the last possession, got the ball stolen by the long Austin Day. Well, the Zags known to play a tough out-of-conference schedule, and that's what they still have coming up. Well, you still you could throw Washington State in there down in Pullman. That'll be a tough one. Absolutely. You know, Utah is, is, is a reasonably tough opponent. Uh, but, you know, the thing about it is it doesn't matter who they play in non-conference because they're going to be successful inside the WCC. So they can afford to play a schedule like that and even lose some games. Yeah, and you certainly use those teams as a barometer against UConn. That's going to be one of the bigger matchups in uh, this season for the Gonzags. And you know, one thing I know that Fran and Len can definitely speak to as well is that when Gonzaga gets in the WCC, now of course they're going to have two brutal games against St. Mary's, their toughest competitor. But when they go into every gym in the WCC, they have a huge bullseye on their back. It's the same thing that happened in Memphis last year in Conference USA. Those games are the sellout games when they go on the road. There's immense pressure when they go on the road in the WCC that I think they just don't get enough credit for for when they win those games and certainly when they've gone undefeated before in the conference and they were 13 and one last year Andy but I have to tell you you got this kind of talent you have this kind of national program that's why I think Mark Few has a great job because they're going to win the WCC most years out of bounds and white ball says Jim Burke Gonzaga basketball and Tennessee trails by a dozen. And this is danger time. Obviously, you take a look right here. You've got to establish yourself in. And actually, Goodson probably, when he got both feet in and established himself, could have grabbed that ball he if can. he wanted to. As long as you fall out of bounds, uh, not, not on purpose, you can come back in and pick it up. Rebound pulled down by Cameron Tatum, who's been quiet in this game. May is a pull up. Uses the glass and it's good. Bobby Mays with six. And a timeout called by Tennessee. And here's Tennessee nine conference coming up against Temple. You got Marquette, Kansas, Gonzaga again, and then the rematch with Memphis. Well, then, and this, you know, this is a little different because Tennessee also has to go through the SEC. I think the SEC, in my opinion, is down a little bit this year, but. Uh, but certainly that's a that is a rough schedule. Well Disney's wide world of sports here in Florida home to over 180 events each year. This multi sport athletic facility is hosting more than 50 different sports including Braves spring training the Pop Warner Super Bowl Tampa Bay Bucks training camp and AAU national championships in 2009 the Disney sports complex will be rethemed with the ESPN brand creating an immersive ESPN experience unlike anywhere else and uh, I can tell you doing spring training games with the Braves here and coming to this tournament for now three straight years it is a wonderful complex and look at the all time records in Old Spice Classic. Well, how about the crowds this year John the Tennessee faithful Michigan State. Len, you did that Tennessee Georgetown game. I mean, that had an NCAA tournament atmosphere type of feel to it. Absolutely did. And again, the intensity, I guess it's a lot to do with pride as much as anything else. Two very good programs going up against each other, and they were playing for pride. No question. They get Chisholm on the foul. That's his second. You always like out of a timeout what the coach sets up, and there's a nice little back cut. Bolden on the freshman. Bruce Pearl's been trying to get Woolwich to get out and deny all, all preseason, so that time he does it, and you use, your, you use his energy against him. 18 fouls on Tennessee, five on Gonzaga. Bulldogs lead it by a dozen. John Shambi, Fran Priscilla, Len Elmore, Andy Katz. The Old Spice Classic, part of Feast Week. Presented by Lowe's here at the Disney Wide World of Sports Complex in Lake Buena Vista. 
where well, the 2-3 zone has taken a lot of Tennessee's offensive movement out of play. And that's a long back line when you look at Austin Day and, and Heitfeld win. Yeah, that's really deterring Tennessee, not allowing them to get the ball down low where they would like, and certainly it's shoring up the offensive rebounding. Well, more good stuff coming up from the Old Spice Classic. Well, they're rattling the rim tonight. There's no question about it. Zags doing their thing. And you better get the custodian out here and tighten up those bolts. <laughs> we'll see if Bruce Pearl's team has a run left in of the freshman. Ronaldo Woolridge so far in this game with six points. And Tennessee basketball with 7.37 to go. They've taken away a lot of their inbound stuff tonight by going 2-3 zone under. Chisholm long on the three. Pargo looking to run. Hesitation, kick out, Bolden hits. Good, good movement by Pargo. What do you think of Pargo tonight, Len? I think Pargo's picked his spots. And again, as a senior, understands how this game is played. He's let the game come to him. He's gotten others involved in just what a, a consummate point guard would do. 8.7 assists for Jeremy Pargo. Boy, Tennessee, in order to get back in this game, it's obvious they have to score, but they, in order to score and set up their defense. You know, they haven't been able to set up their full court defense, their traps, or any of the things that help them come from behind against Georgetown because they haven't been able to put the ball in the basket. Last year, John, when we were in Seattle, we saw Josh Heitfeld play his second game of the year. Completely different complexion for Gonzaga this year with him healthy. Yeah, 14 points, and he has stepped out and knocked down some jumpers in this one. Stephen Gray has been big for Gonzaga. 17 points, including four three-pointers. And Bruce Pearl has gone to his bench hoping to give his frontline guys a little bit of a breather. Hope the guys in like Brian Williams, like Scotty Hobson, and J.P. Prince are going to give them a bit of a lift to start something here offensively. Smith and Hobson, the only two balls and double figures in scoring. Fight for the loose ball. Pargo, Mays comes down with it. Mays to the rim. Williams trying to follow. Williams does follow Brian Williams with four points. And that's his strength right there, the offensive glass. We talked about a significant percentage of his rebounds are of the offensive variety. And in order to be able to get back and set up defenses, they're going to have to be able to score first. Day will try a three and hit. How many weapons do these guys have? When you look at this team, they've got six guys that can get you 20 on a given night. Right now, they have five guys out there that can get you 20. 16-point lead, largest to the game, 11 threes for Gonzaga. And the length of Austin Day, Chisholm tried to stop him. Couldn't do it. I mean, Smith tried to stop him, couldn't do anything with him. Now a couple of power conferences going head to head seven top 25 teams laying it on the line the ACC Big Ten Challenge returns to ESPN Tuesday night seven Eastern Ohio State and Miami the nine Eastern Duke going up against Purdue the ACC Big Ten Challenge ESPN on Tuesday. Well, I'm not sure I remember the last time Mackie Arena was rocking and rolling for a non conference game now that Matt Painter's got the program going. It's a young Purdue team, young but experienced. They got a lot of experience under their belt. Gray has it blocked at the other end by Hobson. Prince, the leaner, Height felt the rebound. Gray to the goal, and he's fouled. Stephen Gray, known as a three-point shooter, but aggressively taking it to the rim and draws the foul. Now, on that last drive for Tennessee, did you think there was contact underneath the basket? Couldn't really tell. Because if there was, that should have been a call, because I think the point of emphasis now is that any type of contact, if it's not a charge, yep. that contact interfered with the shot. you got to make that call. Yep. 
But you like about I tell you what I I'll tell you what I like about Gray as a, as a coach. Once he got the shot blocked, then he came back down the floor, and you have that 16-point lead. You'd be saying pull it out, but you almost don't mind that he has the confidence to say nope, I'm going back in there again. How about this? The Bulldogs leading by 18. Five minutes to go in our championship game. Well, the length of, of Gonzaga, particularly that front line. Look at two 6'11 guys inside, manning that back line of of defense, and it really created problems for Tennessee trying to get anything inside. Williams has his shot blocked. Tyler Smith, little leaner, gathers in the miss, and he'll go to the line. And you know, Len, I think. One of the things that's ironic is I think this year we'll hear a lot that the length of Tennessee is bothering the other team, but tonight Gonzaga.